Hey everyone, welcome back to The Underswell. I'm Derek Savori and today I'm gonna share with you the three things that you can do right now to make your brand more sustainable. And guess what? It's not going to require a lot of investment or innovation or ingenuity, creativity. It's nothing crazy. Sustainability has a lot of different areas that need to be tackled. Some of them get complex very quickly. These are three easy things that you can do right now to get started and get on your path to a more sustainable brand. You ready? Okay, let's dive in. The very first thing that you can do is focus on overproduction. We know that we have a tendency to make too much stuff and that comes to bad planning. I think if we focus on planning, we can do a better job of getting a better order file, know who our customers are, know when they want their product, know how to get it to them, but plan, plan, plan. Plan in your growth, plan in your buys. If you don't already have a purchasing and planning team in place that is aligning and getting that order file right to, you know, right to where it needs to be, then that's an area that you've got to focus on because when we make too many products, we end up not selling them all. We have broken size scales. We have all the issues that come along with just excess inventory. That puts excess burden on our company. We, we allocate more resources to it. Nobody wants to deal with that excess inventory. It's also problematic though because that excess inventory causes us to slash prices, send out a message to our customers that, hey, you need this product now and we're offering it at a discount, we're putting it at 50% off, 60% off, whatever it might be, but that sends a message to the customer that tells them, hey, there's not as much value in this product. Don't worry about it, we can cut prices, we can afford to have our prices be lower. It stimulates overconsumption, that's, and that's exactly what we wanna to try to avoid as well. So this is a two-fold approach, right? If we can address overproduction, stop making more than we need, that will also help your business, it'll help you cut costs and be more efficient, and it will stop sending that message, that frenzied message to the customer to buy more, wait for it on discount, buy it on sale, 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 buy more, buy more, overconsumption, right? Essentially, it all leads to overconsumption. That is a problem that we need to address. So overproduction, tackle it, make it a priority, make what you need, get it there on time, at the right place, and everybody's gonna benefit, all right? So number two, the second thing that you can do, and this one is just as important, and it doesn't come with any, again, adopting any innovative techniques or new materials or anything, just make products that last. Longevity, focus on longevity. We want to, we want to make products that people will hold on to and, and that they will care for, that they will appreciate, that they will value, that will hold up to the test of time, that they can wear over and over in whatever activity that you are designing them for. So if you're designing products for skateboarding or surfing or running or just being outdoors or just yoga, whatever it is, make sure that your products are built to last. So invest in good quality materials, invest in good quality craftsmanship, invest in you know, good construction, put warranties in place, incentivize your customers to repair their goods, teach them, go look at what Patagonia is doing, right? They were the, they were the early adopters there to say, hey, do not you know, get rid of your products, get it back to us, we'll fix it for you, hold on to these things for as long as possible. Longevity in the industry is a crucial component of sustainability, and it's not something, again, that requires anything crazy, right? That is something that you can do right now with the team that you have in place, guaranteed. And that sends a good message as well to our customers, right? Customers are going to appreciate good value. Everybody wants to know that the $100 they spend was well spent, that it was a good investment, and that that product lasted. But that also gives us an opportunity to account for some of those externalities though that we have talked about in previous videos, right? So we know that, you know, sort of working towards a true cost is going to require that we start to bring in or at least consider things like air pollution, water pollution, soil degradation, emissions, et cetera. All of those things are things that we really need to pay attention to and try to obviously avoid, but that comes sometimes at a cost to us and sometimes we need to pass that cost on to our customer. So let them know that there is value in this because if our prices are higher because we're including externalities and doing what we can to avoid them all, then we want to let people know that at least, at the very least, the thing they can see, touch and feel and appreciate is that their products will last them for more than one season, maybe more than two. A good example for me is buying good outerwear. 
If you are a snow sports enthusiast, if you like snowboarding or skiing or whatever it is, you wanna buy products that last, right? And for me, I bought good products, I invested in good products that I could hand down, I could wear multiple years and hand down to my teenage kids and they are wearing that, those products as well. So another thing is designing products that not only are meant to last a long time, but that also can stand the test of time when it comes to fashion, colors, silhouettes. So I really appreciate the work, for example, that Globe did with their low velocity campaign. This idea of streamlining the product, focusing on sort of classic silhouettes, unseasonal colors, and just things that you can dive deep into and focus on things that you can have for multiple seasons over the long run as well, right? And so that way there's, again, we're avoiding this idea of creating a frenzy to buy and promoting overconsumption. We want people to buy things that will last, hang on to them, keep them in their wardrobe, build on to them, and not just buy, dispose, buy more, dispose, buy more, dispose. So a lot of this is a messaging effort. And that brings me to my number three item, the third thing that you can do right now to help make your brand more sustainable and contribute to this movement of sustainability. That third thing is, communicate with your customers. So we focused on overproduction, we're trying to eliminate overconsumption, we're building durability into our products and, and focusing on longevity, making those products last, getting the most out of those embedded resources, right? Um, if you know anything about uh, finance, we talk about amortizing costs and, and spreading them out over the, over the long run. That's exactly what we can do with the resources that we put into our products, right? We wanna get the most out of them because that helps lower the footprint ultimately. Who's to say which is better, right? If you take a sweatshirt like I'm wearing and it was made out of conventional fibers and nothing specifically sustainable, compared that to a similar product that was made with recycled materials or organic, which I am in full support of, but if this conventional one lasts for 10 years, and the other one breaks down after eight months, which one is more sustainable, right? We really wanna make sure that we get the most out of our products, so make it last. So this third one though is telling your customers exactly what you did and why you did it. So let them know that, hey, we are not in the game of overproducing, so we're not going to be discounting very often. Two, let them know that the products that you made might cost a little bit more, but they are meant to last that they are meant for them to get the very most out of them and that you will be there to support the products with repairs, that you will guarantee it, that you will warranty it, that you'll offer to repair it, whatever it takes, get them in the mindset that that is not a disposable item, that that is a product made with value, that you appreciate all of the emissions, energy, waste, pollution, et cetera, that went into making that product and the human effort that was there as well. And let them know that that is value, that it has value and to hold on to it, care for it well. That means good care labels and teaching them how to wash it with cold water and hang dry if they can, not wash it as often. Definitely we don't need to wash everything every single time. So do your best to communicate and start sending that message and changing the culture and the behavior of your own team and your customer base as well. Right there with those three things, you are going to start building a base of sustainability mindset, right? And this is all without investing in anything fancy or switching your supply chain or doing anything disruptive to your business, okay? So there you have it. Those are the three things that I urge you to focus on if you wanna make your brand more sustainable right now. First one, again, let's recap. Focus on overproduction. Eliminate overproduction. Cut down on the amount of products that you are discounting. Stop making too much. Make what you need to keep your business healthy and to keep it growing on the path that you need it to, right? Number two, make products that last. Longevity, durability, warranties, repairs. Make the products that you make, no matter how you're making them right now, make them so that they last and can get a lot of life out of them so that we can spread out the use of all of those externalities that went in there, right? The emissions, the water pollution, the soil degradation, the deforestation, et cetera, anything that was associated with it, at least we're going to spread it out over multiple years, multiple seasons, right? And then we'll tackle all those, of course. And then the third thing you're gonna do is go and talk to all of your customers and start explaining to them your new approach, why you're doing it, why it's important, getting them on board as well to do their part. And now we're starting to change the culture, change the conversation, and guess what? Without doing too much, 
you have just become part of the sustainability movement and you've done the things that you can do right now to make your brand more sustainable. All right, I hope that was helpful. If it was, make sure that you appreciate this video and click on the subscribe button. That helps a lot and it keeps you informed for next videos. And if you really wanna learn more about sustainability in the apparel industry because you're on your way to be an expert or you're changing the way your brand does things, go down and click that free download that we're offering, the 35 things that you need to know if you are on your path to becoming a sustainability expert. It's a great checklist for you to get started to make sure that you are on your path to understanding all of these things that I'm talking about, that the other experts in the room are talking about, and you'll be on your way. You'll be on your way to helping this industry become more sustainable, and I know I will appreciate it, your consumers and your customers will appreciate it, and we're all gonna be better off for it. All right, thanks so much. I'll see you at the next one.